Good morning and a very warm welcome. You are watching Janata Television and this is the English Bulletin with me on Sajaria. The top stories first. Parliamentary Committee begins probe into allegations against Janard and Sarma. Committee seeks CCTV footage along with relevant documents. Citizenship Bill presented in Parliament again. Opposition parties voice concern for scrapping the old bill. Central Bank's governor dragged into controversy again. MP requests the governor's political affiliation. Protesters storm Sri Lankan Prime Minister's office after President's pleas. Protesters defy tear gas, water cannon and a state of emergency. And Nepal victorious against Scotland. Visitors Nepal created history by defeating the home side Scotland by five wickets. And now the news in detail. Sipian Maoist Central Leader Haribol Gazurel has said that the coalition government has succeeded in its main objective within one year of its formation. Leader Gazurel said that the government was able to counter the activities of regressive forces. He claimed that the government was able to foil the attempts of regressive forces through the electoral alliance. He also said that the government played an ineffective role in its fight against COVID-19 pandemic. Leader Gazurel further said that the government has brought a balanced and people-oriented budget. He said that the government has stabilized the economy amid fear of financial crisis. On the other hand, Bhim Rawal, a leader of the main opposition CPN UML, claimed that the government worked against his own commitment. He accused the government of failing to protect national interest. Similarly, leader of Lok Tantric Samajwadi Party, Lakshman Lal Karna, commented that the government's performance was not satisfactory. He said that government was not serious about the economic crisis and added that it failed to provide fertilizers to the farmers. A special parliamentary probe committee has been formed to investigate into the alleged involvement of outgoing finance minister Janardhan Sarma in preparing budget in collusion with business groups. An 11-member special committee reached the finance ministry on Wednesday afternoon and inspected the CCTV footage captured on the eve of budget announcement. Surendra Arya, secretary of the on-site visit committee, informed about the structure and control mechanism of CCTV installed in the working room. Meanwhile, the committee has also returned to the finance ministry to provide the necessary documents to the committee by 2 p.m. today afternoon. Earlier, the ministry had made an irresponsible remark to the Secretary of Consumer Welfare Protection Forum, Jaya Prashad Powdell, that the CCTV footage cannot be retrieved after 13 days. However, the CCTV installation and operation work procedure 2072 issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs clearly mentions that the CCTV footage must be maintained for at least three months. The work procedure further states that the CCTV footage must be made available to the Nepal police or the government bodies immediately upon request and the concerned ministry should bear all the responsibilities related to the monitoring room. Time for a short break here at Janata Bulletin. Stay tuned for other national news. Welcome back. After the break, we continue with other national news. The government has presented the bill related to citizenship in the House of Representatives. Minister for Home Affairs Bal Krishnakant presented the Nepal Citizenship Bill 2079 BS First Amendment in Parliament yesterday. Minister Khan presented the new bill after the two-third majority of Parliament disapproved the protest notice registered by opposition parties. During the House meeting, CPNUML's Pim Brawl said that introducing a new bill related to citizenship by scrapping the old one was humiliating to the Parliamentary State Affairs Committee. According to him, the old bill was deliberated in the State Affairs Committee for nearly three years and a report to this was also submitted. 
Another parliamentarian, Sir Bahadur Tamang, also disapproved the new bill, stating that the new bill was against the spirit of provision of issuing citizenship identity card through mother and father with distinct gender identity. Minister Khan responded to the protest protecting voices that the new bill was presented to constituently guarantee citizenship to those citizens without citizenship identity card. He clarified that the old bill related to citizenship was scrapped after the effort to take forward the bill through consensus felt. And now the news from International Front. demanded probe into the political affiliation of Nepal Rashtra Bank's Governor Mahaprasad Adhikari, a report. A lawmaker has demanded investigation against Nepal Rashtra Bank's Governor Mahaprasad Adhikari during the House of Representatives meeting yesterday after it came to light that Adhikari is a member of the CPNUML's economic and planning department. Speaking at the lower house meeting, CPN Maoist Center lawmaker Rekha Sharma argued that Adhikari's appointment is against the provision that an individual associated with any party should not be appointed the governor of the central bank. Sharma argued that the governor's appointment is in contravention with the existing laws as well as the bank's act and regulation. She has demanded an investigation in this connection and action against both sides, the side making the appointment and the side who got appointed. Adhikari was appointed as the governor of Nepal Rashtra Bank by the erstwhile government led by KP Sharma Oli. According to the state-owned RSS, the UML's latest entry party directive states that Mahaprasad Adhikari of Khotang has been appointed as the member of CPN UML's economic and planning department. According to media's reports, social media users suspect the both are the same person as the address mentioned in the UML last matches with that of Governor Adhikari. Adhikari has reported denied the allegation on social media. It may be noted that the central bank's governor had a fallout with the then finance minister Janardhan Sarma, who happens to be from the Maoist party. Sarma had made a failed attempt to sack the governor in April, accusing him of failing to accomplish his responsibilities as the governor of the central bank. However, the Supreme Court issued a stay order against the government's decision to suspend the governor. On the other hand, disgraced Finance Minister Sarma resigned from his post in connection to a different issue involving the entry of unauthorized people at the ministry on the eve of budget announcement. Now the international news. Protesters in Sri Lanka defied tear gas, water cannon and a state of emergency to shrum the Prime Minister's office after the country's embattled president fled overseas with the crowd demanding both men step down in the face of an economic crisis. In a televised statement on Wednesday, Prime Minister said that he instructed the military and police to do what is necessary to restore order. But armed security personnel stood by on the grounds of his office as protesters, some holding national flags, mild and took pictures. Other demonstrators at one point broke into state television studios as the country's month-long political and economic crisis appeared to be moving forward. A climax. President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, 73, promised at the weekend to resign on Wednesday after escaping his own official residence in Colombo just before tens of thousands of protesters ever ran it. You are watching Janata Bulletin and now the latest from the world of sports. With a top-notch performance from opener Asif Sheikh, Nepal has achieved a historic victory over Scotland. Visitors Nepal created history by defeating the home side Scotland by five wickets in the ICC World Cup League 2-3 series ODI. Nepal creates a history in its 
cricketing career as it defeats strong side Scotland for the first time. With this, the victory in Nepal steps up the fifth in the tournament league table. Young opener Asif Sek hits 71 runs including 10 fours and a sixer. With a sixer in the 48th ball that he faced, he completed the fourth half century of his ODI. Asif and Kushal Bhutel made a good start to the inning by shedding 47 runs in 72 overs before the first weekend went down. Kushal was dismissed for 27 runs of 28 balls with four boundaries. Wicketkeeper Matthew Cross caught the ball that struck Furtel's bat of Gavin Main's bowling, which sent Furtel's off the crease. We are at the end of Janata Bulletin and the headlines once again. Parliamentary Committee begins probing into allegations against Janadun Sarma. Committee success TV footage along with relevant documents. Citizenship bill presented in Parliament again. Opposition parties voice concern for scrapping the old bill. Central Bank's governor dragged into controversy again. MP questions the governor's political affiliation. Protester from Sri Lankan Prime Minister's office after President Please. Protester defy tear gas water cannon and a state of emergency. And Nepal victorious against Scotland. Visitors Nepal created history by defeating the home side Scotland by five wickets. And that's all from the English News Desk for today. You can follow Janata Television and our programs on various social media platforms, including on our website, janatasamata.com. Keep watching Janata Television. Namaste.